Come on, man. What are we talking about? Right, right, right and wrong. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Right, right, right and wrong. Corn Pop was a bad dude. <laughs> Whoa. Corn Pop was a bad dude. <laughs> Whoa. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Right, right, right and wrong. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Right, right, right and wrong. Ooh. Welcome to Right and Wrong. This is the show where we try to wake up the woke by talking common sense about the issues of the day. I'm your host, Brian Ruka, and with me as always over there is my man and yours, producer Juice. He's known out there on the interwebs as the Truth Box because he loves to speak the truth all day, every day. My man, Truth Box, what do you get to say to all the people out there in the right and wrong audience? Am I on? <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. cute to you. No, just uh, Merry Christmas. That's about it, to I be honest. It. Merry Christmas. Not happy, happy Advent. Holiday. Not, yeah, Happy Advent. Absolutely. I not just um, Merry Christmas. Let the good stuff. Yuletide be gay or trans or whatever we're doing nowadays. Yule it up. Yule that yeah. tide all day. I love it. Great job, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for thanks for joining me. Well, um, you know, before we get into the show, I just want to let you guys know that uh, I finally scored a scored a point with uh, with my father in law the other day. Now, he is great, dude. Um, but he is a union uh, lifelong Democrat, you know, the old school type of Democrats. Um, I can definitely get him on my team on our side when when any trans type of stuff comes up, that type of crap he's not on board with. But he's a, uh, you know, CNN watcher, like votes blue all day, every day. And I don't think I'm really going to ever get him to change that opinion, uh, which is OK. It is what it is. So <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, so I was down there, spent the weekend with him last week, and uh, he brought up after everybody else went to bed, we were watching some college football, and he's like, uh, so what do you think of this uh, Israel, you know, Palestine, Hamas type of stuff? And that sparked a nice conversation we got going on that. And the good thing with him is he's um, – always willing to converse and never gets like emotional over any of it. Like just fun to kind of go back and forth. And with this one, it was great because you guys know where I stand when it comes to this stuff. And uh, I, I think there's a clear right side and a wrong side um, pun completely intended there. And we were chatting with it and he hit like every like a leftist talking point and I feel like because of, um, you know, my consumption of conservative media, my um, desire to want to share that with you folks out there in the audience, uh, you know, had me well prepped and well prepared for that type of a conversation. And one of the things that came up was, of course, well, it's complicated. What's going on over there? And, you know, I stood firm, was like, well, not really. I mean, it's, not very complicated. One side, you know, is trying to eradicate the very existence of another and the other side is just trying to, you know, live in their land and not get attacked and not get bombed. <laughs> so, and we kind of went there and he uh, brought up the point where at one point he tried to say, well, you know, before the Israel was considered its own state and the existence of Israel, you know, the country of Palestine was like there. And I was like, well, there's no such thing as Palestine. It's never been a country. Um, it's never been there. And, you know, it was funny because he's like, well, I don't know. I don't think so. Like and then I hear him. And and again, he's, you know, pushing 70, whatever, 60 something, 70 years old. But this always makes me kind of laugh. But he's got his uh, his phone out. He's Alexa or something. Google was Palestine a country. <laughs> And then, like, he's going in, he's like, oh, wow, you're right. Like, oh, it never was actually a country. Okay. Like, and then uh, he goes on to the, um, well, don't you think what Israel is doing now and 
uh, you know, they're attacking Palestine and there's civilians in there. Like the fact that Israel's going in there, isn't that going to create more terrorists down the road? And again, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, again, I get you're watching CNN every night. That's what they're telling you. But um, no, it's not going to create more terrorists. Like, January yes. 6th. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, but what they're doing right now is creating plenty of terrorists. Like, uh, they got a, they got an abundance of terrorists in that region. So Israel defending themselves and then going on a counteroffensive um, is not going to create more terrorists down the line. No. Uh, if anything, you have to eliminate the terrorists and then completely change the culture that is there that teaches these people from a very young age to hate Jews and hate Israel. Um, so that's going to help. And then his last point was the, uh, he brought, oh, well, Gaza Strip is like an open air prison and Israel is holding them there as prisoners. I was like, well, not really. Like, um, you know, if they try to leave the Gaza Strip by the southern border, uh, Egypt saying, nope, no, thank you. Not accepting you to come in this way. Um, and if they want to, um, if they want to go to other regions within the Middle East, like Israel's basically like, yeah, you can't cut through Israel to get there, um, which I think every country would do. They control their own borders, except here in America. We clearly yeah. don't. <laughs> that beat you to the punch there. Mr. XXL sent me something earlier. Make the border great again or something. Yeah, yep. Please, yeah, no, please do. Oh, you want to come to Canada? Where are you going? Yo, Stop cut right there. through here. Forever. But so it's like basically like um, Israel won't let people from Gaza do that. Like, okay, great. Like, how is that anything wrong? And, uh, you know, Israel's completely removed themselves from the Gaza Strip since 2005, I believe. Um, yeah, they do control like what gets shipped in and out, like in certain ports and area but but again it's like if we had mexico touching us in 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 being connected to us um and they were attacking us <laughs> like mexico what? touching us <laughs> <laughs> but they are and it's like if they were sending rockets in here attacking us um you know trying to hit us like that i think it'd be justified for our country to kind of control and monitor what's coming in and out of their shores. Like, you know, it, it kind of yeah, is what it is. We should be doing that already. So uh, that, that really wasn't much of a point. And, um, and it basically like, it was a fun conversation. It was cool. And the, the overall theme is like, I think I feel like I'm like, all right, great. Like I did a good job this time because over the summer when I was down there with, with him, he kind of he kind of handed it to me when I was trying to like blame I forget exactly what it was but I was invoking the deep state and this that and the other thing and he was like well, what's the deep state like and I remember kind of being like oh because I'm used to talking to you guys who all know what I mean when I say that and it was uh I I kind of he kind of you know one up to me in that conversation so this time around. I felt like I was well prepared in the topic and it was, uh, it was something that was fun and hopefully it made an impression on, uh, on, on my good old father-in-law there. You what do you got? Super well, nothing. You just seem super well prepared on the topic. That, well, that one was like, it was great. It was a layup. It was like, if no, you're I'm watching saying, Jeopardy. You, no, I'm saying that seems like you're, you know, know everything about the, no, no, middle, not, at not at all. Not at all. I just <laughs> like, oh, it seemed great. I was like, yeah, you seem like you know everything. Like, nope. I don't think there will ever be peace or anything. I don't want to get into Probably it. Probably not. But yeah, that's not. Oh, what do you want to go? It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> but what about the open air prison? What do you want to go to? Yeah. Where yeah. do you want to go? Um, well, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that. So. If you're okay with it, and I'm okay with it, I think it's about that time we welcome in our good friend, Mr. Rick Flair, because I think it might be showtime, baby. Woo! Showtime! Woo! 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 
Love it. Um, yeah, Rick, uh, you've seen these clips on on X and stuff this past week or so. Looks like Rick Flair kind of got into a confrontation with like a MMA guy at a bar or something. Did he really? I don't really know how it end- uh, ended or whatever. Uh, I hope he didn't yeah, get like, his ass this guy ended saying, home. Nah, like it didn't seem that way, but like it seemed like he might have got his, you know, pride handed to him. I don't know. Like, Uh-oh. look it up though. Put it in the comments, actually. We'll put that in the comments, definitely. I hope yeah, Flair got in his face and told him to oh, be the it, man. It You've got to yeah. beat the man. Yeah, but this dude, like, poking him in the chest. Like, no, Flair <laughs> starts by, like, putting a finger yeah. on him. And this yeah, guy, yeah. like, but he's respecting, like, dude, you are, you are the man. And he, knowing that, like, and never Flair really just kept going it. with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put that in the comments. Or put I it like it. Week. Um, yeah. well, what we were speaking about there at the beginning kind of segues nicely into what we wanted to talk about at the beginning, um, which is this hearing on the Hill earlier this week, which these clips have been going around. So I'm sure we're familiar with them at this point, but, uh, the presidents from the university of, uh, Penn, Harvard and MIT were called in and they were being pretty much grilled about this ridiculous anti-Semitic um, rhetoric going around on all their campuses. Like we've showed clips here on the, on the show. And again, they, these are all over the, uh, the web. So we know that these campuses are, are just pro Palestinian, um, you know, demonstrations going on left and right. Like the, those chants of from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which is, completely calling for the genocide of all Jews. Like it wants to destroy the, the, the country of Israel. Um, That's what that chant means. And we've seen it all over the place. So these presidents were, were called into Congress and uh, that was a topic that got brought up at one point by um, Elise Stefanik um, from New York. She had the, the, the highlight moment of uh, of these hearings. So I think um, we got the first clip here, Juice, if you want to pull that one up for us um, with Stefanik uh, kind of grilling the presidents and asking them if it would, um, you know, constitute punishment uh, or violate their codes of conduct within their universities. So why don't we go ahead with that one? Does M- at MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment? Yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements. Yes or no? Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated as, as harassment if pervasive and severe. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. Context-dependent. Depends on the context. Um, and depends if they follow through. Uh, I'm sorry, this probably isn't the right time. For this, but uh, remember they call it a fatwa on Larry David. Yes, <laughs> when he's at the bagel shop or oh, going to the absolutely you know, going to the that's, a, that's a great the season. Fatwa, the whole one, except for except for the more and more Larry David's like the most crazy. Just listen to the news, liberal. There oh is. yeah, I mean he's a super lib woke. 
Like, yeah. but um, but that fatwa. that whole season's hilarious when they have the fatwa against them. Great stuff. And our boy Lynn Manuel pops up throughout that season. Mm-hmm. Um, but how crazy is that? Like these people can't just say, Yes, it's you know, a form of hate speech, it's it's an act of of violence. And and again, like me and you, I think are pretty solid where we where we think like I've said sticks and stones, right? Um, and we believe in the f- the freedom of speech here in this country. But the problem is these three women, these presidents, enforce a strict code of speech conduct within their campuses that's separate from freedom of speech because it's a campus entity that creates their own rules and restrictions and decisions when it comes to that stuff. And all these college campuses are very quick to dismiss the Ben Shapiro's of the world, our boy, boy Michael Knowles. Like these people get canceled and removed from being able to give a speech because their speeches are considered hate speech because they say that men are men and women are women. Yet they, these college presidents, will allow rallies to be held where students are chanting from the river to the sea, which is a call for genocide. And they're saying, we're here, we're queer, we're coming <laughs> yeah. for you. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we know it's bullshit, what they're saying. Are you comparing Palestinians to queer culture? No, but queer culture and Palestine culture are all on the same side right now because they're the oppressed in this country and you see and, those signs where it's like queers for pal yeah like, dude, yeah go get, go hang in like the it. gaza strip yeah go have a see if they, they'll put on we'll let you march down the the go go down the whole strip the gaza strip the whole area there go right down main street yeah different than the vegas strip yes and see if if they'll allow you to have a, a pride parade down those streets <laughs> the queers for palestine what would happen? No, a queer fatwa, I'm sure. Yes, exactly. Um, so, needless to say, do we? Um, we have one more clip from from the grilling, right? Oh uh, yeah. Before I was going to jump to the next thing, but let's let's oh, play the this Harvard one. Lady, the- yeah. So, is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer? Yes. If it uh, is, if the yes speech or becomes, no. if the speech becomes conduct. It can be harassment, yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm going to give you one more opportunity for the world to see your answer. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's Do targeted at said? Jewish students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you understand that dehumanization is part of antisemitism? I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric. When it and is it anti-Semitic con- rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying. Crazy, right? Hold on a second. I didn't know that I was on. But... Um... <laughs> That's true. Like that's the Harvard president, lady, yeah. a lady who looks like Puff Daddy, whose name's <laughs> a black lady whose name's Doctor Gay. Like checking every, <laughs> didn't she? Doesn't she kind of look like Diddy, right? Doctor Gay, the black lady. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen her, right? Oh, that's awesome! Yes, that was great. Diddy. And have the glass. Oh, please. If you guys are on um, Apple or Spotify, please stop watching us on YouTube. You got to see this stuff. 
It's incredible. Ah, oh, that's that was great. Thank you for that. Um, but how about the context dependent? Like, so so like we're here as the questioner being like, wait, they have to they have to follow through with the threat kill of all, genocide. Yeah, kill all the Jews. <laughs> like but once they once the they Jews, commit but... it, once they kill them, then it will be <laughs> an act of violence. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me? Kill all it, the Jews. And then no. they kill all the Jews, and then they're like, oh, dude, you're guilty of the chant. Exactly. Kill exactly. Yes. And the thing is, with the with these things, is it's like, I believe in this country. You have the right to say whatever you want, freedom of speech. Like, you can say that stuff. Doesn't mean a university has to let you be a student there at the university. So that's the thing that, like, pisses me off with that, and especially from these woke leftist universities that love to shut down speech from conservatives or things like that. So they have no problem shutting down speech. That's what the, really pissed me off with this. And, and again, our freedom of speech does not allow you to have freedom of, of, you know, an education, I guess, or a job at a specific place. Like, no, those companies are also free to be like, you know what? You're a, Jew hating Nazi, <laughs> like I don't have to let you be a student here at my school. I don't have to employ you at my company. Like, I, I don't understand what the hang up is on that, but ultimately it all connects to the same thing where it's the oppressor oppressed mindset of a leftist, and all these presidents are leftists. Um, it's no surprise that all three of them are women. <laughs> like, and again, like I know, feel like I probably get accused of being a little misogynistic at times, um, especially after my Trisha cat story from a few episodes back, but we, we all have specific abilities, talents, whatever. And a woman could do things that a man could do. A man can do things that a woman can do, but how ironic is it that the university presidents from all three of these places just happen to be women? Like, and then one, a black woman who looks like P. Diddy and named gay. Like, it's all about box checking at this point. Like, and I can't help but Probably think one that of those probably, aren't, aren't like gay, LG, or transitioning. I mean, it's got to be, right? Like, and, and it's just, it, it's more so like, I don't know anything about these people at all, but it's just like, oh, of course. Let's of course, them. they're all women. Let's crush <laughs> them. <laughs> no, I know. Like, oh. like before, say, forty years ago, whatever, twenty years ago, whatever, there would have been zero women, right? Yeah. And then now, which, which now, again, it's not. I'm not saying we have to be like that. Yeah, yeah, just best person for the job type of scenario. Yeah. But now it's three women and one is gay, gay black, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's see what the, somebody apologized actually. If okay. That. Let's go to the, yeah. I think it was the one from Penn McGill. She she thinks she she saved her job with this. There was a moment during yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-Semitism when I was asked if a call for the genocide of Jewish people on our campus would violate our policies. In that moment, I was focused on our university's long-standing policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. It's evil, plain and simple. I want to be clear. A call for genocide of Jewish people is threatening, deeply so. It is intentionally meant to terrify a people who have been subjected to pogroms and hatred for centuries and were the victims of mass genocide in the Holocaust. Uh, she continues to go on and grovel and grovel, right, Juice? Dude, what are pogroms? You heard of this? <laughs> yeah. Maybe she should have that role. I guess so. <laughs> Over my head. That's yeah. Ivy League stuff right there. Um, even... 
I think we can sum up that video pretty quickly with, right? Like, during yesterday's hearing, I was asked if the genocide and murder of all Jews is a bad thing. I failed to answer this question because I'm a crazy leftist who thinks in the oppressor oppressed hierarchy. In Jews, because they do well and are successful and are westernized, are the oppressor. Palestinians and Hamas terrorists deserve to have an opportunity because they are the colonized. And we should not hold any judgment. We just need to cease fire. And I'm just trying to keep my job right now because so many people are removing their funding from my university. Mm -hmm. What I didn't understand was that this might cost me my job. So I'm apologizing and hopefully this gets swept under the rug and moves on from the news cycle. Thank you. I think that's about it, right? From her? Yeah. Yeah. That was Absolutely way better than what she did. Way better. <laughs> Except for you forgot to say programs. I couldn't fit the programs yeah. in there. If I knew what a program was, yeah. maybe I could have fit it in there. And may our but, programs be with you. I don't know. I got a couple of programs <laughs> I'm trying to catch up on after we finish the episode, see if I can oh, find yeah. them on Netflix. Yeah, programs like... Uh, <laughs> Bob's like uh, Seinfeld, I still watch that Bob's every night. Burgers. Yeah. Oh, uh, Bob's Burgers. Um, okay. Good. All right. Let's shift gears a little bit. And we all know that there was another Republican uh, primary debate. Um, sans the the Claire front runner right now, Mr. Wait, Donald does Trump. everybody know that there was a debate? Maybe well, not. Like, yeah. and, and, and honestly, like, Again, I feel like we, we're doing what we're doing. So we're probably slightly more informed than most out there. I didn't even realize there was one going on that night. And I just kind of happened upon it like a couple minutes before it started. I'm like, just oh, going right. to X and looking for looking Yes, the find the clips and stuff. Um, yeah. But this one was actually pretty good. Like it's at least narrowed down to four people now. So it's just Christy, which I have no clue why that guy's still on the stage um nikki haley uh, ron desantis Dang. yeah the <laughs> croissants, uh, croissants for sure Chris Assange. um so christy nikki haley vivek and uh ron desantis with a four up there i think it should have just been the three of them uh you know obviously there should have been four it would have been nice to have trump up there with them too uh but end of the day uh, it was actually a pretty good debate, like with that going on. Um, but kind of sad to say, I gotta grab it here. Um, but I don't know what I did with it. Uh, yeah. Juice's Juice's phenomenal wife got me this shirt last year for Christmas, and uh, I've been wearing it, you know, for a year. DeSantis Haley, I I was on board, liked it, thought it'd be a good ticket. Um, I hate to admit, after the debate the other night and some of the other things, rip it. You, up you rip to it, it, I could not. Can you rip that. that? I can't uh -huh. hogan that. Nikki Haley is dead. She's done. Her political career should be over. Um, it was a clip that I saw circulating before the debate, uh, and I'm glad that it actually got brought up during the the debate too. But um, if we can play the clip first from Haley talking about uh, the government's role when it comes to transing children and that type of stuff. Um, and, and I think we got it, right, Juice, if you want to give it to us. Yeah, Chris Christie, clip one. <laughs> Uh, Madam Ambassador, another question is what care should be on the table when a 12-year-old ch child in this country assigned female at birth says, actually, I feel more comfortable living as a boy. What should the law allow the response to be? Well, I think the law should stay out of it, and I think parents should handle it. Unqualifying right there. That answer, complete dud. I think the law should stay out of it? These people want to abuse their children, but the law should stay out of it. 
that is the squishy, like center right Republican um, textbook answer to a question like that. That's gotten us to this place where we are right now. Uh, and, and that's just not acceptable going forward whatsoever. That should be the easiest question that she's asked. Dude, not to mention, remember flexed. last week, uh, last week, last episode, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when she was doing that Kim Jong, uh, not Kim Jong, <laughs> I mean, President Z thing. Yep. You were saying yep. that. You're big on that. I was on board. Yeah. yeah I'm right. telling you, I was still on board at that point. Um, this happened, I feel like, before that. But... And, and and that's, she... your, that's your, you lived there. You elected her, I think. The one, I know, I know. The and, one time and, you had a vote. And that was the thing with like her is I, I, I did, um, you know, whatever. I, I kind of liked her. I thought like, okay, like, you know, everybody, you do need a little bit of moderation too. Like not everybody thinks exactly like us. And, you know, I feel like we're, we're pretty principled with what we believe. I feel like we back up what we believe. And I think it makes sense, but I understand that not everybody is there yet. Um, I understand, and that's where you need people like like the Nikki Haley's, like that are a little bit more moderate, maybe that can that can appeal to uh, an independent, uh, a little bit more moderate thinking uh, voter. But I'm sorry if you can't you get stand up for on. children. And the thing though, what's that? She gets smoked later on in this thing. By- oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like, it's like, like to me, it was like, okay, I was, I, I didn't mind her. Like, you know, whatever. Like, as a VP for somebody, maybe, like, you know. Um, and I heard that answer, though, to that question. I'm like, that's it. Like, I can't do it. Like, she's completely unacceptable to me yeah. at this point. All these, these and- people who, are a part or a party to that are like tweeting it, doing it for the vine. Yep. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh my god. Absolutely. Kid, I have a dog in a handbag and a trans child. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't right? have Par- it. Yes. I feel like Paris Hilton is kind of conservative nowadays compared to I hope so. Then, right? Dog and then probably handbag. and then right then it's like, oh my kid is you know, quadrisexual. Quadrisexual. Okay. I haven't Sweet gotten there yet. No, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Let's put it in the yeah. comments. Let's get that yeah. thing defined. Yeah. Pan, what do you think? Pans and trans. Pan Pam situation. Um, no, I could help with the Pan Pam situation. <laughs> I, I think we got like another. Calm, calm, calm. Calm, calm. Folk, with folks. 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 Um, no, no, folks with simple- an X. To be oh. inclusive, Yo. let's hang. Let's hang. I like that. I right, like we it. Bathroom. We got a bathroom. No, bit. let's jump over to, to DeSantis absolutely smoking Haley when it came. This this conversation came up during the debate. So let's see this one. Tape. So first of all, I will say that when I was governor, 10 years ago, when the bathroom situation came up, I, we had maybe a handful of kids that we're dealing with an issue. And I said, we don't need to bring government into this, but boys go into boys' bathrooms, girls go into girls' bathrooms, and if anyone else has an issue, they use a private bathroom. Now, 10 years later, we see that this issue has exploded. And this shows how hypocritical Ron continues to be. When he was running for governor and they asked him about that, he said he didn't think bathroom bills were a good use of his time. You can go look that up. I signed a bathroom bill in Florida, so that's obviously not true. (laughs) So the idea that you would say that I I was against that. You didn't. You killed it. I signed it. I stood up for little girls. You didn't do it. And there was this going on. I was actually just in South Carolina. Some of the legislators told me at the time there were boys going into the girls. That's the whole reason why they did it. And so they say when she does that explanation that that doesn't hold water. And this is the upstate of South Carolina. I signed the bill. I protected the girls. Do you know South Carolinians? She did not do it. Do you know South Carolinians? Because South Carolinians... No, no, no. 
You are not going to talk about my state like that because I will tell you for a fact, South Carolinians never allowed that to happen, and we hadn't, we did not have that issue at the time. What I have always said is boys going to a boys' bathroom, girls going to a girls' bathroom. bathroom. But hold on one second. I also say that biological boys shouldn't be playing in girls' sports, and I will do everything I can to stop that because it's the women's issue of our time. This is All right, I am it's the easiest answer in the world for DeSantis yeah, right the, there, right? The, the biological boys in the sports, in the ladies' sports, isn't the women's sport. Uh, sorry, all that jumbled words. Isn't the thing of our time. It's like the going in the bathroom is, in my mind, more important than, than the sports? being in the sports thing. Yeah. Like yeah, just being absolutely. in, like it starts somewhere else. Okay. The sports thing, yeah, yeah, okay. But at least, like, you can't have a private space. Like, that's where no, you're. I'll, I'll admit, too, like, I've, I've, like, I've grown in my mindset over the past five years or whatever. Like, I feel like when those bathroom bill stuff was coming up in, like, the Carolinas at the time, like, I was like, oh, like, I didn't realize how important it actually was. And I think I that's. I the... going into the other bathroom and waiting. But honestly, like, I think that's the the ability of a lot of this, like, weird leftist agenda type of stuff is, is that they kind of start with these kind of, like, smaller, like, weird kind of, like, things that, like, make you just be like, oh, dude, like, I, I honestly, when I came to the bathrooms, I used to be like, how weird would it be if there was someone fully dressed like a female, like a girl, all out, standing there next to a urinal? like in a urinal next to my kid, like, because he's a man, like, and I have to make him go in the men's room. I used to be like, Oh, that would be kind of weird. Like as long as they kind of addressed like a woman, looked like a woman, like whatever. But like, I've since grown to be like, mm, that's even creepier. <laughs> like, and well, that's an opportunity uh, for pedophiles and whatever else is going on. I'm concerned about um, like all, every time it's not the girl becoming the guy normally. Let's be honest. No, right? it's the guy it's the, becoming the girl. It's the, the 40, 50 year old guy putting yes. on the thing, going into a girl's room with my yes. six year old daughter. That's yes. the issue. And that's, right? I don't want that at all. Yeah. Like, no. Um, so, yes, absolutely. But, but like I said, though, like it's like, it's, it's almost like, like I feel like it tricks you into being like, oh, like, like, uh, I don't want to make a, is it really well, that? Let's not have a fatwa like, on the trans. Thank you. Um, but at the end of the day, that's where the Nikki Haley's of the world are. That's where those types of politicians stand. And I love the fact that DeSantis, his whole shtick is like, I'm a good governor. I get done what I say I'm going to get done. Like, I actually govern. I use the power that's granted to me to get things accomplished. And I think that's his bread and butter. And so that exchange was perfect for him. She's trying to talk about like the, what I will do, what we should do, what I can do. And he's like, oh, well, this is what I did do. <laughs> and, and he does that. Like, he's like, how can you accuse me of this? I actually signed a bathroom bill. You did not. <laughs> so... Tell me Dude, whatever uh, else you plan on doing. I'm the fattest I've ever been, but you've seen Chris, Chris Christie. Oh, right? yeah. At the very beginning Absolutely. of the clip. Oh, he's huge. Like that he's going to like fall through the podium. The whole time, too. Everybody else on there is like standing, you know, yeah. at attention almost, like trying to look good. Like, you know, they all got their nice suits on and stuff. And yeah. Christie the whole time is... He's just yeah. leaning on looked, the thing. Yeah, like the blue suit. He looked like Veronica the, from the. Oh, it's brutal. You know, she turns into a gob berry. Oh, Rock. Violet. You're turning Violet. Yeah. yeah. That He's in like a blue suit. He's going to roll down the freaking street. He is. He absolutely like is. Uh, but the he keeps, other people got bumped out, right? He's. Well, dude, he's, he's, so he's actually, for around. some reason, he he's doing okay in New Hampshire. Which is the second like like state? So I feel like that's what's keeping them in. Um, but anyways, to stick a fork in Miss Nikki Haley, the death of Nikki Haley. 
I think came when our boy Vivek Ramaswamy um, went out on a limb by suggesting that she wouldn't know the answer to his question. And, uh, you know, she, she, you know, acquiesced, I guess, by not knowing what he was talking about. And it shows. Didn't know so. the pro programs. No, there? not at all. The pro programs. Pro the, the pro policy experience is not the same as foreign policy wisdom. I want everybody at home to know that I was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in Ukraine. Now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position with the exceptions of Nikki Haley and Joe Biden who still support this what I believe is pointless war in Ukraine. And I think those with foreign policy experience, one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, regardless if these things are silly, foolish, Trump has a 39, 40-point lead or whatever, like, it's good to just call people up. She didn't. She was like, did something like this, and and Northern, that was like Northern Providence, provinces, dude, oh, whoever, yeah. whoever the director is, the cameraman, like whatever, like perfect too, because they zoom right in on her face yeah. as he's saying that. But dude, this is becoming more WWE than oh, Smackdown. absolutely. Smackdown. I mean, that's what v- Vivek is, is Dwayne The Rock Johnson of political debates. He's out yeah, there. Be like, careful what you say there. He might be a 2024 candidate. He I could remember. be. He could be. But Nikki, like, like Viv- I'm expecting Vivek to be like, what's your name again? And when she starts to say, like, Nikki, it doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> it goes into a rant. Oh, yeah, great he stuff. It. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, like, um, I think. I don't think. I don't know. I think it'd be a great cabinet, like somewhere. Yeah, love him. Absolutely. You know, he's not he going to get this nod, and I don't think DeSantis should get this nod either. I don't think it, he he was good in this one, like in the clips I'm I saw. A, I'm a DeSantis guy. You know, I am. I'm a Trump guy. I'm and I'm fine with Trump too. Like I'm not trying to say I'm not. Like I would support Trump all day, every day. I love it. Like. If you if you hack any of my like equipment like at work or stuff, all my passwords are Trump twenty twenty four. So just so the the web knows that. Um, but I just strategically, for some reason, think that DeSantis would have a better chance, possibly at winning the nod, and then if winning, I think would know how to wield the power better. Where, like, I think Trump is obviously just a personality, a celebrity, like, he's, and he's know, great Trump at it. DeSantis best, is a politician. Best president knows how to that use I've it. been a – Trump's best pet president that I've been alive for. Absolutely. I agree with that all day. All day. Great, I great. I agree with that. Great foreign policy. The, you know, foreign Roe policy was phenomenal. Roe, Roe versus Wade. Wade. Yeah. Like, his – the COVID shit, like – See, I don't think deal. he, I don't think he handled COVID well, and that's, that's what I'm saying. What Not ideal. Right. I'm saying no. Yeah, definitely. But he's the best, still the best. But he was hamstrung. My life also, time. too. No, absolutely, best president for us. I, I, I'll agree with that. All day. And Biden yeah, I would is love the worst. Him. Biden is the <laughs> worst we've ever seen. Right? Eh, maybe, okay, Mister Obama. Obama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. Mr. Obama yeah, might yeah. be worse then, because he because of his influence and his his uh, his actions were were so more influential. Like started this division, yes, made it this absolutely, way, absolutely. It was just a, a lackey. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, all right, that. good stuff. Um, so Nikki Haley's done. I hope uh, that's it for me. Like I would never consider her going forward. Not that. 
I was really gonna get her in the comments, pod anyways. Bro. Yeah. The comments is like a grave. I mean, not the comments, the uh, you know what I mean. The notes. Yeah, she's gonna I be lost in the notes. notes and the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Dodd, find her right there. Yeah. Just click on it. I swear to God, it will be there. Um, all right. The uh, the last thing I kind of want to get to here for the stuff we wanted to talk about today was uh, this this push in two weeks at this point, right? But Elon Musk at that conference with all the uh, you know all the important people out there in the world, these CEOs, these rich, wealthy donors, all, all that. Um, Elon was being questioned about um, advertisement dollars being pulled from X from Twitter. And if he's worried about that, and uh, I think we got a good clip of that. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. (laughs) Is that clear? I I hope it is. Hey, Bob. You don't want. Hey, Bob. He's a hey, Bob. Phenomenal, right? And Juice, you want to let them know what what the hey, Bob part of it means? Bob Iger, right? Absolutely. CEO of Disney. He's a a Jew, though, so. Uh oh. Oh, shit. Fatwa. (laughs) Penn. MIT. Apology, uh, Pat. Harvard. Apology. What do we do here? Um, no, <laughs> walk but, it back. Walk it back. But now walk it back. Now walk it back. <laughs> so the whole reason he says like the high Bob thing is because Disney was announcing, uh, and Bob Iger, like you said, is the head of Disney. So they made an announcement that they were pulling all their advertisement from Twitter and X because of uh, you know they disagree with some of Elon's statements. Um, you know, recently or whatever. So Elon Musk, like, I love it. He's being asked about it. And like, I understand that it makes it 10 times easier to do this when you are literally the richest man on earth. But like, how does that not translate to all of us out there to be like, you know what? You're some rich effing snob who's trying to hold me over the barrel by dangling your ad dollars in front of me and being like, you know what, do what I say, agree with what I want you to agree with, and I'll happily give you my ad money. Disagree with me, say something differently, I'm gonna yank that ad advertisement dollars right away. And Musk is like, go F yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, unbelievable. Dude, yeah. oh, I wish I care less about the money than having that moment being like, the fuck off. Moment. Yes. Not that people are like trying to buy us out, but no. But it's just like it's here, almost... we'll we'll do it. We'll, we'll talk. To you. Yes, and and again, it's like at the end of the day, like me and you, we both have we both have real jobs that like like this isn't what like I would love if this show took off and we were able to do this show instead of work like nine to fives. <laughs> like that would be awesome. That's hopefully where this leads at some point in our lives. I'm under no illusions of that happening tomorrow for us. But if that ever did happen, I would hope to God that we would not be dictated to as to what we have to say, the stories we would have to talk about. Like I wouldn't want it if that was the case. If yeah, we ever no, became... it's not okay. Just like hammering. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I would want to be like, okay, these are the stories we want to talk about. This is what we believe, and it is what it is. You know, I wouldn't want the the corporate CEO to be dangling our contracts over our heads or like advertisement dollars or this, that, or the other thing. Like, f off. Like that's why Elon, the richest man in the world, appeals to regular schmucks like us. <laughs> like, you know, in in him buying Twitter and turning it into X and doing what he's been doing is the appeal of all of that. That's the double birds uh, to the entire like mainstream go along to get along world out there. And it was just a joy to see that. Um, 
I will shift in unless Juice, do you have something to add on Elon at all there real quick? Nope. Shift in. Okay. Perfect. So the shift that I want to do is, is having said all of that, and again, maybe maybe this is me and Juice auditioning for a slot at the Daily Wire. But last week I told you about um something else that they were doing. I forget what I was hawking for them. Um Bent Key. Bent Key, yes, thank you. Um, so this week I do want to let you guys know that they released their first ever full length, um, feature comedy film called lady ballers. And I'm not trying to say this is Caddyshack wedding crashers, old school. It's not, but I enjoyed the film. I really did. I think it kind of had like a comedy film version of like a PG 13 feel to it where could have gone a little bit further and I think really could have solidified it. Um, but for the, the fact that this company, the daily wire was created just off of a couple of podcasts and turned into a media corporation that it is now where they're coming out with documentaries. They're coming out with movies like what is a woman they're coming out with full, you know, stuff like this now. Um, I can't help but support it. Same with the bent key stuff that I was telling you, content for your children. And when you see the way a company like Disney operates with Bob Iger, um, you know, hey Bob, hey Bob, wanting to force <laughs> it, uh, as one of his executives said, not so secret gay agenda into your children's programming. How can you not want to support a company like the Daily Wire? In in you know, indulge in the program, program. Is that what the lady said? Program, program. Programs they want to provide to us. Um, so again, like Lady Ball is fun movie. I'd give it a solid C. Um, but for like, they had no actors in this movie. It's all they're all just podcasters, like cast into a movie. Like so, okay. Like I get it. But I will tip my cap 100% for the fact that they're willing to do it and willing to back up what they believe in. And it's the easiest thing to make fun of in the world, the stupid trans stuff going on these days. So that's basically what they did. So I think we got a little bit of a trailer, um, kind of something that Juice put together there for us, right, that you grabbed uh, to tell you about Lady Ballers streaming exclusively on the daily wire the people have spoken lady ballers is the number one streaming movie in america we're heroes it's a dragon festival bring the kids we could dominate every woman's sport my pronouns are i'm strong watch the most triggering comedy of the decade i was just invited to the white house to give a talk on Women's rights. You earn that. You own it. Lady Ballers. Exclusively on Daily. Good stuff. Like I said, um, I don't wanna I don't wanna sound like I'm just a, a complete shill for that place because I'm I'm a member. Me and Jews both have our leftist tears tumblers. Um we support them and everything oh, they oh, do. I'm not only the president, I'm also a client. Exactly. You know Thank you. A so, up, but man. Yes, I could use that too. Woo. Um, so I a hundred percent support them and I've never been shy about that. But, um, if you were ever to consider joining, I think it's, it's worth, um, the money it takes to, to join, become a member. Uh, they got a ton of content on there. And like I said, it's, is it Caddyshack? Is it the best comedy of all time? No, not at all. But is it worth an hour and a half of your time? Absolutely. You'll get a few laughs out of it. And more importantly, it's supporting what that company stands for. And, you know, we support that. Like, hopefully everything they do gets bigger, better every time they do something. And I'd rather give it to them than to give it to Bob Iger. And that's where I stand on it. What about you, Juice? Yeah, I agree. 
Didn't, right, awesome. I thought, never mind. <laughs> What? You don't want my review. You it. hated it. Ju- juice lasted nah, a half an hour and was like, I'm out. <laughs> no, I, I think it's probably good. <laughs> I think it's probably good. I just. My You're going to be in the right mood saying, to watch. Yeah, something. we've been and we've been saying the same joke, but I think it's great for like the average, you know, get that out to the average person. Do you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. We've been doing trans jokes and all this stuff. Yeah. So, and, and so again, like, to me, not... it was like, oh, then the daughter says gender fluid. It's like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. Know. Exactly. No, but I, I know. But yeah. Then... No, and, and like we, like we said, like none of them are actors. Like they're all like, they're all just podcasters. And the dude, Je- Jeremy's yeah. just the CEO of the company. Yeah. And he makes himself but, the star uh, of the movie. Like he's not an actor. Walsh and Walsh and Knowles. Are hilarious. Someone like oh, I like Walsh going like this, and he's going like, yeah, 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 yeah. Walsh was awesome. Flash Great stuff. Um, so right. yeah, like in in whatever. So that's it on that. Why don't we move on to our um favorite person to to shit on, Miss Hot Tamale, Hot Latina. Oh, hot, 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 oh a big yeah. booty, a big, big booty, booty Latina. <laughs> Oh, the Latinx. Oh, Latin X, baby. <laughs> so she's going to be the subject of our Come On, Man segment of the day. And those of you who have been with us uh, for a while, which is probably the only people that actually watch us, uh, you guys know that the Come On, Man segment is uh, what we like to do at the end of a show where we highlight somebody that has said something, done something so ridiculous, so absurd that there's really not much else we can say to them except, come on, man. So uh, without further ado, this was AOC um, talking to someone uh, about the girls, uh, trans men um, in female sports conversation. I spent a decent amount of my time here in Congress sitting through panels and hearings of men attempting to restrict the rights of women and telling us that it's for our own good. Um, But I want to dive a little bit more deeply into why this issue with targeting trans women in sports is particularly problematic, not just for trans girls, but for all of us. We're here today because there's a proposal here and there are several proposals here uh, to further marginalize trans women in sports. And I think about this all the time because trans people in the United States doesn't even exceed 1% of our population. And yet there is so many resources and energy and time dedicated to figuring out how we can more finely exclude them um, from our sports. And I thought, why, why? Why so much effort and dedication on such a tiny portion of the U.S. population when there virtually is no major issue that is, um, that is precipitating? And I started to realize that a lot of these proposals here um, involve invasion of privacy of all women. Where are her glasses, first of all? When she's really trying to be serious and prove a point, she busts out those glasses. So I don't understand what she's doing there. But secondly, um, how many times when she talks does she just try to like use words that she she's like thinks are going to be like catchy buzzwords for people? She tries to use like words like that are fancy sounding oh when does it precipitate the uh precipitation of the uh personification of the situation <laughs> like what are you Pre- doing precipitation is a crazy word for you what about problems no it's not oh, a crazy yeah. word like whatever problems might be participate <laughs> yes. in the background? oh yeah oh, oh the lady fully masked in the back Loving it. Absolutely teed up. Um, But how about AOC? Her first line of attack in this questioning, right, is the Democrats' favorite game. 
we're doing something completely ridiculous, completely out of the ordinary, completely absurd, and it's going to change all of our standards and norms. But why are you noticing? Why are you noticing? Like, she's like, oh, it's only a, like 1% of the population. Do you not understand that this is your whole worldview and this is why you guys are so obsessed with this? You guys are the ones forcing this on people. You guys are the ones shoving this down our throats. When we push back against it, when we say, hey, listen, this is a little nuts. Why are you noticing? This is only a small fraction of the population. Like, piss off with that. And then when she can't get us on that, she tries to broaden the conversation from the absurd, from the extreme into Republicans just want to control women's bodies. Republicans want to tell us what we can and can't do. And I don't, I don't want know to if give you... away the thing, but. I think well, she had women, whether it be cis or tra- like, no, nah, I don't think that's on a different clip. End of it. Yeah, it's no, like, no, 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 that's the thing you can't do. Yeah. No, it's the not. It's not bodies, women. Whether they be cis or trans, no, those are men no. and women. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just women's body, whether they are women. <laughs> like, cis yes, or exactly, trans. exactly. I think we, uh, I think we got a little bit more on this whole thing. We might be stopping and starting a bit here and there, so. Let's keep going with it. You down with AOC? Yeah, you know me. Ms. Goss Graves, can you tell us a little bit about what sex testing looks like for youth in states with trans athletic bans? It's terrible. Uh, In some states, any individual could challenge whether someone is a girl enough to play. In some states, it requires actual genital verification, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. Um, And there aren't, it's not as if there. And let me just stop you right there. You said there are some proposals. I mean, we've seen this in Ohio. There was a proposed ban on trans athletes that originally allowed for genital examinations on minors in order to quote unquote protect women. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. And so we're seeing here in this guise, under the guise of not only trying to further marginalize trans women and girls, we are talking about opening up all women and girls to genital examinations when they are under age. That's right. Potentially just because someone can point to someone and say, I don't think you're a girl? That's correct. And we're saying this in an environment of a post-Dobbs America, where states are criminalizing access to abortion and want nothing more than data on women to figure out when, who's getting a menstrual cycle, who doesn't have one. And we're supposed to believe that this is gonna make us better and safer I think not. And per usual, I don't believe we're sitting here in a panel of men that has actually thought about the biology and privacy consequences of all women, trans or cisgender here. Yep, yep. You notice this time around, the hands really started going a little bit more. You're telling me. (laughs) You're you're going to walk. You're telling me. No, you know, I'm serious now. I got my glasses on. I got my glasses, you, you know. She's playing with her mic, moving it around. You know, the glasses. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. And the cisgender and the, you're telling me that men want to control women's bodies. That's in a post-Dobbs world. In a post-Dobbs. In a post-Dobbs. <laughs> so notice that at the beginning of this, it's about, dude, at the end of the day, should full ass grown men be playing sports against women? That's what this is about. And she brings it to okay. Should 
should men be playing with women? Oh, this is such a small number. What are we even bothering wasting our time on? This isn't barely even happening. To then the next step is, well, if it is happening, you know, this is in a women can't get an abortion day. This is in a men are trying to tell us how our menstrual cycle should work. You're trying to monitor what I'm doing. When am I menstruating? When? Oh, okay. No sports for you. Like, so just completely moving along the lines. So now she brought in the, oh, what's the big deal, people? And then she got those people and she's trying to bring in the, uh, well, men are trying to control women's bodies, people. These I'm feminists, not... like, men, w- women control people. Sorry. Like you're, you're like, not what? I'm not, like, the ones that we're seeing are the issues. We don't need a fucking, are we looking at a prepubescent uh, vagina? You know, she's like, oh, we're doing general checks. Like, yep. Dude, this is everywhere, like. Just don't put the the girl or the boy in the thing. We don't need to be general. It's It's because you're doing this bullshit about like, oh, they can do this and identify as that. Now you're making it to be general checks. But like, no, just like if you're a boy, go to the boys game. If you're a girl, go to the girls game. If you're the guy who's doing the bike riding, which I think that's all a woman's sport. But like, you're all race. We don't need to check the genitals. Not that hard. Who, like that kills. What do we say? Oh, you're saying they're moving it to a genital check. Absolutely. Do a, what do we say? What do we say at the beginning of the show? Common sense about the issues of the day, right? Like, come yeah. on. What are we doing here? <laughs> That's it. We got some more. Huh? <laughs> if you want. Gender here, Miss Gosgraves. In addition to that, are there certain groups more likely to face discrimination under these bans when well, it comes to, and, w- and what you were speaking to, particularly when it comes to black women and girls? Yeah, we, we have seen that there are examples of uh, black women who are even professional athletes whose bodies have been more examined and demonized. We've seen that with my fan favorite, Serena Williams, whose body is often mm-hmm. talked about. Um, That's sort of challenging them for who they are. Uh, If it is codified into law Mm -hmm. is something that we would expect to see. What do you got? Not that I'm just saying, has anybody ever seen Serena Williams? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, those glasses. (laughs) Hilarious. Well, Um, I'm even more serious now. The glasses are even bigger. Like when I'm really trying to prove a point. How big is your pen now? You don't have a mask on your face? We couldn't see you at all. Yeah. I would just say, has anybody ever seen Serena Williams and Michelle Obama in the same room at once? Who, Obama? Michael LeVon Robinson. Oh, no. I've never seen them in the same place, actually. That's a great point. (laughs) Those glasses. Great point. Um, and I think we've all heard plenty of times um, <laughs> clips of Miss Serena Williams grunting along, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe that's why that might become come into question, not just you like that Barack. Her. <laughs> Is that the spot? I love it. I love it. Um, but come on. So she's gone from we're doing something extreme and ridiculous. Why are you even noticing? To it's an attack on all women in our menstrual cycles. To now it's discrimination against black and brown women who are more subjected to questions about their womanhood. Thank you very much. All right. We have, I think, one more of her, right, Juice? Yeah. 
too long, but let's, we'll see what we get. And, and this also deeply intersects with a secondary issue, which is racial bias in the medical field. When we have vast proportions of populations that have been studied and tested are not right racially or otherwise identity-based representative of the broader U.S. population. And so what gets determined as a norm oftentimes gets pegged to largely white populations that have been studied and then black women and girls are then further subject to to um, marginalization this, this has been in your experience and what you've seen as well right that's correct and so we're supposed to sit here on this side of the dais and to the ranking member to ranking member lee's point see a, a party that has voted against women's access to abortion, voted against our right, the Lilly Ledbetter Equal Pay Act, voted against the Violence Against Women Act, voted against our right to have access to contraception, and also doesn't even vote for equal funding, equitable funding in women's sports. And I'm supposed to believe that this is who's looking out for my best interests? I think not. And to that, I yield back. You have spent horrible well, tries sure. to close it tries to close it with men don't even want to fund the women's sports equally with the men's sports to which i say no i don't i'm sorry i don't because um women's sports <laughs> suck like they're not fun to watch that's why nobody watches them nobody goes to them it, it is what it is i'm sorry to but say we that i love women though no. absolutely I like great. And I want them to play. Like if women want to play sports, I want my daughter to play sports. She likes playing like what she plays. Like it's, it's fine. adorable. It's adorable. Yeah, it's great. But at the end of the day, like I'm not watching the women's college basketball. Not team. really watching it though. Right. No, I watch my own daughter, like play recreation like, and kids, but <laughs> yeah, but, and she tries to tie it into that at the end. These people don't even want to fund them equally. No, why should we? Can't have why contraception. She goes to contraception. Of course, she tries to bring in all babies. the bugaboos. She she wants to bring them all in because it just ties into her entire worldview. And oppressor oppressed is like the go-to. And it's like, oh, men have been the dominant members of the society and women are oppressed living in the kitchen, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's where they go with that. And it's like, dude, you want to completely erase womanhood by allowing men to come in now and beat women in sports to take it no. away from them. Dude, no one will be in the kitchen at this point. No, no. It's absolutely <laughs> absurd. We'll all go hungry. <laughs> like, fine. Awesome. That's the downfall of society then. Great. Um, yeah, it really could be, though, so. that we don't reproduce. Like that's no, really of course. And it, it's like we already it's already happened. We've gone from my grandparents had eight children. My parents had two. I have two. Like in you guys, two. you have you have three in have. your family, and then you had two children of your yeah. own. Yeah. But like well, yeah. that's like who else? No. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Yeah, possibly. Go for it. Um but at the end of the day, like and, if we like and subscribe, like and subscribe, maybe he'll pop another one out. We'll get yeah. another juice child. You can name. There. You can name them. Name them for comment. Yeah. Type in code. Top, top type in code juice box. <laughs> top comment gets to name the boy. Absolutely. Because you get um, to pick the gender, like whatever was. His I guess. Or, yeah. I mean, we can. We're, we're going to decide the gender twelve years from now, right? Actually, type in the gender, and then we'll just assign it later to them. Perfect. I love it. Um, awesome. So uh, I guess with all that stuff being said, Miss AOC, once again, because I'm sure you've earned one of these before, but you have earned yourself a big, fat classic. Come on, man. And uh, I think that'll do it for the show. Juice, you got anything else to add to the people? You want to let them know where to subscribe and follow us? Yeah. On all those things, on the places and things, and uh, 
Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. The Right and Wrong Show is produced by Juice. Executive producer, Juice. Audio mixer is Juice. Hair by Skull Shavers. Wardrobe and makeup by Ashley Ruka. Right and Wrong Song created by Juice. The Right and Wrong Show is copyright 2022 from Brian Ruka.